Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna go over junctional tachycardia. So, let's get started. This is an abnormal rhythm that originates from the electrical structures in the AV junction. So we're talking about the AV node or the bundle of Hiss. So these electrical structures are now acting as the primary pacemaker of the heart, where normally our sinoatrial node or SA node usually acts as our primary pacemaker. But in this case, it's either working too slow or not working at all. And these electrical structures in the AV junction, they actually have an increased automaticity, which means that they are firing extremely fast. Because in junctional tachycardia, our heart rate needs to be regular, but greater than 100 beats per minute. And junctional tachycardia is a type of SVT. So SVT stands for supraventricular tachycardia. And the reason we call it a top of this is because it originates above those ventricles. Now, how is this rhythm going to appear to you? Well, first let's talk about how a normal ECG waveform should look. The electrical conduction system starts in the SA node, known as the sinoatrial node. And this is found in the upper part of the right atrium. And it's the site for the main pacemaker, which causes your heart to beat at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. So whenever the SA node fires, it sends electrical signals downward throughout those atria. And whenever it does this, this causes atrial depolarization, which leads to contraction of your atria. Now we can pick up this contraction of the atria on the ECG by looking at the P wave. That's what the P wave represents, your atria contracting. So the P wave should have these certain characteristics to it if the SA node is firing like it should. The P wave should be upright and there should be one in front of every QRS complex. Then after electrical signals leave the SA node, it goes down to the AV node. And this is really like the second pacemaker of the heart. It causes the heart to beat at about 40 to 60 beats per minute. And it has the nickname gatekeeper because what the AV node does is it causes a delay in electrical signaling so the atria can fully empty into the ventricles. Then once it leaves this spot, it goes down to the bundle of Hiss, which is like our third pacemaker, and it causes the heart to beat at about 20 to 40 beats per minute. Then electrical signals go down through the bundle branches. We have right and left bundle branches and to the Purkinje fibers. And then we get ventricle depolarization. So we get the contraction of those ventricles. Now, whenever the ventricles contract, they are going to create the QRS complex. That represents ventricle depolarization. And then after that, since they've contracted, they now have to rest. So we're gonna have ventricle repolarization and the ventricles are so big that when they relax, they are gonna create the T wave. And then this process repeats itself over and over again. So what you wanna take away from this is how that ECG waveform should look and what certain parts should measure because you need that information whenever you're trying to analyze abnormal rhythms. So first thing you wanna make sure you have one P wave in front of one QRS complex, that P wave is upright. Then from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex is known as the PR interval. You always wanna measure this. And this should measure anywhere between point 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. And the PR interval is the delay in conduction by the AV node. Then you wanna take a look at that QRS complex. It should measure less than 0.12 seconds. And then you can look at the QT interval that starts at the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. It can measure anywhere between 0.35 to 0.44 seconds. This really varies depending on gender and if your heart rate is fast or if it is slow. And then you wanna take a look at that T wave and make sure that it is upright and where it's supposed to be. Now let's talk about how our ECG waveform is gonna look in junctional tachycardia. So we've already established that our SA node is no longer our primary pacemaker, but the electrical structures in the AV junction. So these electrical structures are sending out signals extremely extremely fast. And one thing you want to remember about this rhythm is that the rate is going to be greater than 100 beats per minute. Now, as these electrical structures in the AV junction send out electrical signals down through the ventricles, they will do this normally like they should. They're doing it really fast, but it should normally go down through all of those electrical structures and cause ventricle depolarization. So you will see a narrow QRS complex of less than 0.12 seconds. You'll see a normal QT interval and a normal T 
wave. In addition, whenever you're measuring from R wave to R wave, you will see that it is regular. So this rhythm will have a regular ventricular rate. Now where things start to get abnormal is with our P wave. So normally the SA node sends down signals throughout the atria. So they're going downward and then it hits the AV node and goes throughout rest electrical conduction system. But here our AV junction can send signals backwards up through the atria, so retrograde. And because they are doing this, this will have a profound effect on our P wave, which is one of the hallmark findings in junctional tachycardia. And what I mean by this is that the P wave can appear in different locations on that ECG waveform. It may be in front of the QRS complex, but if it is, it'll be very close to that QRS complex, which will create a very short PR interval. Remember, PR interval should be 0.12 seconds to 0.20 seconds, but it's going to be less than this. In addition, that P wave can be hidden or concealed where it's actually within that QRS complex, or the P wave can be after the QRS complex. And then whenever you're looking at the P wave in leads two, three, and AVF, it will appear upside down. So to help you remember that information about that peculiar P wave in this rhythm, let's remember this little jingle. Inverted P on AVF two and three, before, after QRS, if you can see. Sometimes it hides and you can't see it at all. When it appears in the front, the PR interval is small. And here you can see an example of junctional tachycardia. We have a heart rate of 120, so that checks the box that it needs to be greater than 100 beats per minute. And whenever we go to look for our P wave, it is behind our QRS complex, which is not where it should be. And this is actually in lead two. So you can see here that our P wave is inverted and it's right before that T wave. And our QRS complex is narrow, but we have a normal QT interval and T wave. Now what causes junctional tachycardia? Well, it's actually pretty rare in adults, but if it does occur in adults, it could be due to a myocardial infarction, inflammation of that heart muscle, or digoxin toxicity. It tends to occur in the pediatric population who have had congenital heart defects and they're recovering from surgery. Now, what's our role as a nurse with this rhythm? Well, first of all, we want to assess our patients, see if they're having signs and symptoms. Because a problem with junctional tachycardia is that that heart is beating extremely fast. And whenever we're beating really fast, our heart is not feeling like it should. So if we're not feeling our heart like it should, we're not pumping out as much blood like we should, and our cardiac output is going to drop. So you want to look for signs and symptoms of low cardiac output, which include shortness of breath, low blood pressure, dizziness, chest pain, increased capillary refill time, and weak pulse. Treatment for this rhythm revolves around controlling that rate because that heart is too fast and we need to slow that rate so it can start to feel properly. So we can give them some medications to slow that rate, such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers like deltiazem, verapamil, or antiarrhythmics like flecainide. And if you want to review these medications in depth, you can access this playlist up here that will help you do that. Now, if medications don't work to slow that heart rate down, they're really just not responding to it. Another treatment that can be done is called a cardiac ablation. And this is where tissue pathways are destroyed in the heart to prevent this rhythm from occurring. Okay, so that wraps up this video over junctional tachycardia. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this series along with the free quiz that will test you on this information.